Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles, coming to you from an altitude of 5,280 feet to a guest at sea level uh, on the other side of the planet. And we are excited to have um, Dr. Marcus on the podcast right now, Dr. Marcos Chacos. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, so you may have to correct me. Um, we are excited to have you listening to the Mile High Podcast or watching, whether it be on iTunes or Stitcher or um, YouTube or Facebook. Make sure you hit subscribe so you never miss any Mile High tick. And of course, you want to mark your calendar for Mile High 2021, June 3rd to 6th. We're going to be focusing on the art of chiropractic. Um, and Dr. Marcus has just in really... Um, does something that I am in awe of that he has produced as a program um, down in Australia to help the ACC, a family wellness super conference. I was honored to be a guest and we're excited to help you get to know him and get to know more about what's going on in Australia and the ACC and what happened with um, this family super conference. And really his passion has grown in chiropractic over years and its focus in a holistic approach and impacting lives. Um, thank you for joining us, Dr. Marcus. Uh, Dr. Daniel, thank you very much. Super excited to be here. I have, you know, I've, I've been listening to your podcast for years. I've, you know, I've loved what you've done. I've always wanted to get to Mile High over in the States, but um, yeah, there will come a time and a place where we get to have that experience. I'm absolutely certain of that. And thank you again for your involvement in the Family Wellness Conference. It's exciting to be here. Um, love what you do and appreciate all that you do in service of the profession as well. Thank you. Well, and, and I hope the next time I'm going to show you, we get to connect live uh, too as well. Um, so first of all, let's help people get to know you a little bit. And then let's get to this incredible undertaking of the Family Wellness Super Conference, as well as the other online educational programs that you put on and all the 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 vision and the why of that and what's going on in Australia. But first, how did you find your way into chiropractic? <laughs> um, my wife is going to be so grateful to hear this story. So <laughs> I was in high school, wasn't certain what I wanted to do. In fact, I thought I was going to be a surgeon. It was my goal and my vision to, I think I always wanted to help people and had a focus on health. I won the um, a debating award in year 10 and bought an anatomy textbook with the prize money. Um, so when I was 15, I just knew that I loved health, but I had no idea what that direction would be. And I started dating, who's now my wife of 31 years um, in high school. In, we, I think what you call college over there, we call high school in Australia. So, right. you know, you're 16 and 17 years of age. And so I'm not certain what I want to do. Don't, you know, I, I'm looking in health, but she decides that she's going to enroll in chiropractic. She'd always been adjusted. Um, in, throughout her life um, and had gone to an incredible chiropractor here in, in Canberra in Australia, really well-known, Don McDowell. Um, and I hadn't had any exposure to chiropractic, but I was like a little lost lamb. And she said, I'm going to enroll in chiropractic. I said, well, I will follow. Um, and simply not knowing what it was I was going to do, enrolled in chiropractic at the Sydney College of Chiropractic. Um, an incredible philosophy mentor of mine and leader um, was... Um, John Kelly, who was the, the dean of the college at that particular point in time. And so on a Tuesday night, 7 p.m., I still remember the first week of university, he opened up with, there is a universal intelligence in all matter that constantly gives of itself and profits, thus maintaining itself in existence. Now, I did not have a clue what that meant, but I knew that I'd been changed in that moment. And from then on, chiropractic was in my head, in my heart, in my DNA, and my wife, decided to have a gap year and didn't enroll in chiropractic. And then we had a family from then onwards. So although she never became a chiropractor, she became instrumental in me becoming a chiropractor. And um, I was fortunate to not only go through college, but then John Kelly became my mentor. So philosophy was deeply um, embedded in my, my chiropractic DNA from day one. And since that point, I've always wanted to, you know, to represent the profession with purpose, with passion. Um, in an, an aligned way with uh, the hope of continuing to, to, to expand the message of chiropractic throughout certainly my practice, my community, and you know, Australia and the world. It's so amazing how things weave together in our lives, and which always, to me, brings back to our major premise, you know, and uh, the universe, you know, the major premise 
Uh, there is a universal intelligence. I always think of that as trusting life and how trusting life it just orchestrates things and weaves them together in, in ways that we can't see from our vantage point. So that's very amazing to see. And then you, you've practiced for many years in Australia. Um, there's been a big push with the new uh, school, ACC, um, and the need for that. Can you talk us a little bit about, for especially for people that are not familiar with Australia, of the why of a philosophically based school is, is, is necessary? Yeah, 100%. Look, this, this is something that I'm very passionate about. And I think, in fact, the world needs to be passionate about because of Agreed. the of this topic. And, you know, I, I graduated said, um, from Sydney College, which was a philosophy-based chiropractic. John Kelly, lecture in philosophy, you know, in, and then basically taught the most people throughout Australia some level of, you know, principled approach. He was the one responsible for bringing Reggie Gold over and, you know, all the great speakers that came to Australia. Um, you know, he was the catalyst for, for so much of that. And again, there's such a debt of gratitude we owe to John Kelly. And as we went out in the world, we just simply had this naivety that chiropractic would always be what chiropractic is, principled, philosophically based, driving a mission-based practice was integral to, to us as we graduated. And then, you know, I've been in practice now 24 years and around about seven years ago, um, there, were, there, are, there are a number of teaching institutions within Australia, Macquarie University, RMIT down in Melbourne, um, South, uh, Queensland, South Queensland University, um, Murdoch University. So they're the four that are within Australia. And then there's obviously New Zealand College of Chiropractic over in New Zealand, Auckland. Um, but those four teaching institutions within Australia had had philosophy removed from the curriculum. And so uh, around about four years ago, the head of the RMIT in Melbourne College was asked, what is the difference between the graduating chiropractors and the graduating physiotherapists? And he said, they're indistinguishable because the curriculum is the same. And, you know, at this point, Patrick uh, Sim and, and a group of other people were already spearheading the Australian Chiropractic College. And the fact that we had no philosophically based teaching institutions in Australia at all, and I was experiencing new graduates that were coming into for an associate position and spending two years getting them up to a level of understanding that they could actually practice principled chiropractic. And it was a realization at that point in time, as a result of the changes in the curriculum and the practitioners that were graduating that, you know, not only was the ACC, the Australian Chiropractic College entirely necessary, but an entire revisiting of how we educate our established chiropractors, um, the, the, the new graduating chiropractors and how as existing, you know, philosophically based chiropractors, we continue to reconnect to our philosophy, invest more deeply in ourselves to maintain um, our integrity and stay the course. So the ACC was born from the, the both the knowledge that philosophically based practice, um, practices were becoming less present within Australia and teaching institutions were graduating chiropractors that were not in alignment with, you know, the, the vision that BJ held for chiropractic. And so Patrick initiated that project with, with you know, Aaron Scott and Hayden Bell and uh, Mark Possels, um, you know, and so that was an amazing uh, project that they began, and that launched at the beginning of this year, 2020. The challenge was it got approval after massive resistance, ma incredible obstacles. Um, it got approved in November, which meant it was really difficult for them to be able to promote the college and get student numbers, and so there needed to be around about 35 students to make it a break-even point, and they had 12 enrol, and so they were already up against a financial challenge and obstacles. So um, as a result of that, you know, we began doing fundraising and one of those events I did was a neuroscience summit where we raised hundred thousand dollars to put together some funding to support the ongoing costs for the college because it is such an important landmark in Australian chiropractic. But equally the way I, and if I can maybe jump on a soapbox for a moment, but the way I liken what is happening in Australia is really because if we talk about it in a way that I'd prefer not to, but there is a war and there's a war going on. And when America came to the, you know, the allies help in Europe, D-Day was, is, is, a, is an event that meant that Europe survived a war against being dominated by an oppressor. 
and America was so instrumental in that process. Well, I believe Australia is Normandy. If we lose principled chiropractic in Australia, if we cease to be able to be a thorn in the side of whoever is opposing principled chiropractic, America's going to war on two fronts, Europe and at home. So the longer we stay strong, the principled approach here in Australia can become powerful and actually mean that the world becomes galvanized behind the principles of chiropractic. So that's really why I'm doing what I'm doing, serving the ACC to make sure it maintains its passion and, and capacity to function in, in a principled way, that chiropractors become, again, revitalized with the principles of chiropractic and that we you know, unify the world chiropractic America, chiropractic Europe, chiropractic Canada, chiropractic New Zealand, so that as one, we are strong and together we rise. So really that, that's what's been happening in Australia and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Well, I, I wanna echo some things you said because I want our listeners to hear this. Um, and I, I'm glad you said that that way about not wanting to refer to it as a war. I, I, I get that consciousness and I have that sense myself as well. And at the same time, that has been going on globally for many decades, and it's just reaching um, a certain um, point where it's more and more people are aware that that's the case. I would like to say that from my vantage point in a reorganizational healing concept model uh, of healing, when I look at that whole chiropractic thing, what you said about Norbindi and D-Day, oh, it's so true. So, so true. And so the world needs to pay attention to what's going on in Australia. And I see that right now, sometimes um, it's the darkest before the dawn, right? It can look the most messy before. And I, I hold on so much so and really see and believe that the new renaissance for chiropractic is coming, is here from the work that people like yourself and others are doing. Uh, globally, because what's happening, the the why, the way the, and I, I ran into Mark Postles in the airport, we had this discussion, um, it's the only time I met him face to face, we, we happened to see each other in an airport, is that, that right now, that whole scope expansion push, the whole like make chiropractic education, a physical, physical therapy education, it's really the last reaches are drowning person you know like there's a paradigm that's dying and you know when that's dying uh when someone's drowning and they're drowning one time two times three times they're, they're falling and they're reaching up for help they try to pull everything down with them i feel that that allopathic model in chiropractic really is reaching for its last breath and there's a new there's there's some lifeguards that uh that are around such as yourself and such as others in chiropractic um that know that hey we, the, the vitalistic time is, is, is coming to resurface and it's, gonna, and it's a new renaissance that's happening. And I, I hold out so much. I know why the reason why yourself, Patrick Sim, the other people in Australia and the other people around the globe that are doing these things, whether it be in Colorado and Mile High or people in Europe, um, is because of that focus, right? And wanting to have, knowing that, we, hey, we, we've got to be the, the generation that doesn't see chiropractic completely go into allopathy, but rises it up out of the ashes of what we've seen in the last couple of years. So um, I appreciate so much so your energy and your efforts. Let's talk about the Family Wellness Super Conference. You just put on a Herculean task of a seven, um, a, a seven day uh, chiropractic conference, a Family Wellness Super Conference and had 75 speakers. Is that accurate over seven days? Am I, am I saying that correctly? Okay. Uh, which, is, which is amazing. And uh, raised a, a significant amount of money for the ACC, which is awesome. And we'll talk about that more. I had a lot of supporters. First of all, what was the, what was the impetus to make that happen? To say, hey, wake up, I'm gonna pull this off. Oh, look. Um, <laughs> There's a roundabout story to that as well. First, obviously, you know, the ACC, I, I backgrounded to that story as well. But there was another event that happened in Australia last year that, you know, some Americans are aware of, particularly the, those involved in pediatrics, but not everybody is aware. Uh, there was an event last year in chiropractic that 
uh, a chiropractor's video, you know, raising your child up, check, doing a, uh, a, a check, a, a traditional uh, check that so many people do, the midwives do, the, the birthing doctors do, but it was videotaped and then um, it went viral and medicine, medical doctors and orthopedic surgeons got behind this and made massive criticism of this doctor and chiropractors. And we had, as a result of that, um, a, a moratorium on um, treating uh, children under the age of two. So chiropractors were asked not to uh, manipulate children under the age of two um, until a research study into the safety of pediatric chiropractic could be undertaken. Um, and if it was found that chiropractic was going to be unsafe, then that would be extended to the ages of 12. So there was a nine month moratorium on chiropractors manipulating children. Um, notice my use of the words that they used as opposed to my own words that I would use to how I interact with my um, children in my practice. Um, however, there was a, so a nine month moratorium while they did this research. A survey of nearly 22,000 people were conducted with 99.9% .9 favorable responses and 0% negative responses, evidencing the safety of chiropractic, but they have not closed the report because although it has been evidence safe by survey, it is not evidence as um, the efficacy of chiropractic pediatrics is still under question because the research available is not of the level to provide um, conclusive statements according to this um, uh, organizing body. So it was really clear to me that if we are going to maintain the ability to see children in our practices, families in, in, our, in our practices, that we need the research that supports that. So in addition to raising funds for the Australian Chiropractic College, we also put funds to um, the Centre for Chiropractic Research at the New Zealand College of Chiropractic with Heidi Horford. So we're providing, uh, as a result of this, you know, we, we raised $80,000 for this event, 75 speakers, over 100 hours of content, um, yourself uh, included, incredible, passionate chiropractors dedicated to serving principled chiropractic. And you know, the, the 80,000 we raised, the opposite cost of that will split those funds to continue to support the ACC, um, Australian Chiropractic College, and also do pediatric research. And this becomes a program that we will continue to deliver and refine over time. Um, and much needed um, research money will be created from this so that we can get those little pieces of paper that do say, to the governing bodies, to the medical profession, that not only is chiropractic safe, not only is chiropractic effective, but chiropractic is in the central part of family care. And this is able to be qualified by what they call research, which clinical evidence, our own experiences are insufficient in the minds of, of, of the research papers and the, the people who promote research evidence-based um, professions, let alone chiropractic. And so we are going to get that evidence and we're going to put it in such a powerful and compelling way that the absolute necessity of adjusting children and being part of a child and a family's life becomes clearly defined. And so I'm excited to, that was the motivating reason behind a family wellness super conference and getting speakers like, you know, Claudia Onrig and um, again, uh, Rob Melillo and Adrian Wimban and just these incredible rock stars of people who know and love principled pediatric and family wellness chiropractic and them sharing their purpose, their passion, their mission for making family wellness integral to practice life and community health. So that was, its, that was the meaning behind it. That was the purpose of fundraising for it. And we are going to save pediatric chiropractic here in Australia. And that is part of my commitment too. And, and realize if there is challenges in pediatric chiropractic in any nation, it is a concern to everyone, right, globally. Uh, you can't be, you can't be like, oh, this is happening in, you know, Europe, and it doesn't affect us here in our, in, here in America. You cannot have that kind of point of view by far. Um, and tell us the outcome. How much money was raised this year? So uh, the neuroscience summit, hundred thousand, and the family wellness super conference, eighty thousand. So so far with these two events, we've raised hundred eight thousand dollars, and you know the. It's 100% other than obviously the cost, like hosting websites and things like that. This is entirely a charitable event. All of the money goes back into um, organisations that are that that are you know needing the money. So, I'm going to applaud because raising uh, seriously uh, raising that kind of resources 
for chiropractic, it takes a lot of energy. I, I've been involved with that and done that. And it's, it takes a tremendous amount of energy. It takes a tremendous amount of intention. It also takes a tremendous amount of commitment and vision. So I want to acknowledge you uh, for your vision and for chiropractic and for the, uh, the countless lives that that will impact for the better in terms of uh, practice members, or, or not just in Australia, but in the world, because that will impact so many lives. So uh, there were also other people that supported the super conference. What were some of the organizations that supported? We should acknowledge them, I would think. Yeah, 100%. Look, it wouldn't have been possible without again the, the support not just for the speakers and obviously the speakers that you don't have an event without the speakers but i think also what made it possible was the teaching institutions the australian chiropractic college got so so behind me in this and supported um, amazing even new zealand college chiropractic they they you know, worked really hard to make it possible as well phil, phil mcmaster and patrick sim were instrumental and then we had organizations like um, soto the safe occipital technique organization the australian spinal research foundation um, you know, companies that really are principle based and want to serve the profession, they were amazing. Uh, with, the, with the Family Wellness Super Conference, we had, you know, Sammy the Centipede goes to the chiropractor um, and Chiro Clicker, you know, organizations like that that really want to and resort, you know, resort, resource practices to improve their capacity to function well. So those types of, um, you know, levels of support made it possible for us to be able to know communicate and contact with people and, and and then the speakers you know sharing their message sharing their vision it was you know incredibly humbling experience to know that you know we when, when we have a mission and that mission serves the profession uh, the the profession gets behind you and it's he's i've spoken with people and we have a beautiful profession we have a incredible servant heart within you know Every, every chiropractic doctor that walks this planet and they get behind it because they know that you know, this is one of those old cliches, you know, they love what I love, so they love me and I love them and universally we come together as one and the impact is greater because of it. So really I'm, I'm only a byproduct of the, the support that I have had um, serving this profession and, and I'm just so excited to be a part of it and, and to continue to do this. It was really something that stimulated the thought around fundraising as well was when I realized that BJ had raised, I was told $20 million for research during his career, during his period. And I thought, who else is doing this at the moment? There are lots of people raising money. There are lots of people doing research, but an individual organization committed to fundraising for the long haul for chiropractic. So we do need to come together and unify as a profession and succeed as a profession because you know, there's hundreds of billions of dollars going into pharmaceutical research and very little into chiropractic. So as a profession, we need to get behind research and support what it is that we do so that we can not only have the certainty, the confidence and the belief, but we can also, we don't need the credibility in a curriculum from a medical institution. We may need the credibility from the research so that we can evidence the claims that we know are true of chiropractic. Absolutely. And it's so true. And I want people to note that are listening relative to the organizations uh, that Dr. Marcus just mentioned relative to that, these are organizations that step up to support chiropractic. Pay attention to where you spend your resources or who you donate to and who you contribute and who you purchase things from as the ones that show up and support our research and support organizations. Um, I'm very conscious of that. I wanna encourage people to be conscious of that as uh, throughout. And so true, research, is vital in chiropractic. We had what happened recently now in 2020 and what's going on uh, what the statements of the WFC put out relative to immunity um, and whether, you know, the, the claims. And we all know that there's a change in beingness and immunity from our clinical practice. And there is evidence and we can use more. We can always use more evidence. The people that say, oh, we don't need research for chiropractic. We know it's true for philosophical reasons. There, that's a real poor place to come from in terms of the future of the, of the profession. There has to be time, energy, resources uh, put into, into that. And I'm so glad that you're leading that charge or one of the people that are leading that charge and to do that through um, the neuroscience program that you did last year, as well as uh, this year's Family Wellness Conference. Um, so phenomenal. And now you are, one of your focuses uh, which is very timely, is chiro education online, chiropractic education online. Can you share about what about that? 
Yes, yeah, so Chiropractic Education Line is the company that I established to do the fundraising. So it um, houses the neuroscience for chiropractic summit. It houses the Family Wellness Super Conference and for all the future events that we'll be doing as well. For example, um, I, we had a chat beforehand and I alluded to the next year we're going to do Man's Greatest Gift to Man um, Chiropractic, which is a, a revisit to the history, science, art and philosophy of de Jacomo's original work. Um, there it is. <laughs> and, and our, we, we've maintained that um, that theme for the branding of this event as well. So that, that will run next year. So all of these, so chiropractic education line is making this education accessible to chiropractors, continue to fill them with principled knowledge and wisdom. And you know, because it's a, a not-for-profit, it is going to ensure um, that fun, those funds get disseminated. And we are going to continue to create education and events on an ongoing basis purely for supporting um, principled chiropractic uh, through fundraising events such as these ones and the future ones. And that's what chiropractic education online is about. And so this is, this is my endeavor to be able to, to serve the profession. So, so let me ask you this. For someone to get to the level of energy, conviction, everything that you've brought to chiropractic, um, what are some of the, whether it be books or the people that really sparked or influenced you um, in terms of you as a chiropractor? That's a really great question. Well, I, I think that there's three things. Well, there's probably four things that I do that continue to maintain my passion. And the, the, the first one is I, I read every day. Uh, you know, you, you held up that book, Their Man's Greatest Gift to Man, whether it was Strauss, whether it was Reggie Gold, whether it was Fred Barge, uh, you know, reading the classics and, and immersing myself in those. And I have over on my wall over there, it's not in the background like yours. Uh, every time there's a new chiropractic book um, or that I come across that may not be new for the first time, I, I grab that and I read that. So for example, Atlas Shrugged, I just, I hadn't heard of that book before, but you know, it, I just saw it. It's a chiropractic book. I'm going to buy it. So that arrived in the mail the other day. So I, I don't know anything about it or anything about the author, but I'll read, but whether it's Strauss's blue books, again, you go back to the green the green books and so reading daily is something that I do and uh, also listen to podcasts and audiobooks. So, you know, the, the Mile High podcast, when I listen to your speakers, it reminds me of why I do what I do. Um, by interview, the second thing is when I connect with people, whether it's just through my mentor groups um, or my, the masterminds that I'm part of, it continually reinforces uh, the principles, the, the community and the connection and, and the love that this profession has. And if uh, uh, one real side note to, before I answer this question is um, from a perspective of my, my son asked me, said um, he's 19 at the moment and before his 18th birthday said, dad, will you buy me a car? And I said, what type of a car are you looking at? He goes, I'd like this one here. And he named a car and, and I said, that's about a $20,000 car. He goes, yeah, that's what I'd really like. And I said, I'll make you a deal. If you decide that rather than $20,000, because I'm going to be honest with you, I will not spend that on your first car. Your sister got a $600 car, you'll get the same. However, if you want an investment of that magnitude, I will pay for a mastermind for you for a year. And that will set you up for the rest of your life. And he's like, why would I want to do a mastermind? I said, because if there was one thing I could change in my entire career is that I would have been masterminding a lot earlier because who I have become and how I have grown and what I've learned within my mastermind groups by having a coach, by having mentoring has transformed my mind, my thinking, the opportunities and my willingness to serve and contribute. So he didn't take me up on that offer, but he is 19. So he was 19 at the time and uh, or 18 at the time is 19, but we'll see whether or not he uh, fulfills um, the opportunity to, to get that. But mentoring is something that I think is an instrumental um, and finally, being in practice and sharing the message and preparing for workshops, that continues to galvanize my purpose and my passion. And then that final fourth part was really seeing the reality of what's going on in the world and saying, if not me, then who? If not now, then well, when? And taking responsibility for my role in the chiropractic profession. It's if you do not face the truth and if you are oblivious to what is going on in the world, if you are in denial, or if you are saying someone else will do it, I don't have the skills then opportunities are missed. And I decided, and it may not come across here on this conversation because I've got much better after interviewing now a couple of hundred people. Um, I am a very, very strong introvert, a very quietly spoken person. 
And I decided that that was not going to serve the profession. I have a wonderful practice and it has served me having that very strong, intimate communication with my, my practice members here. However, it was not something that I would necessarily have done out on a stage or um, gone out into the community to do, but I realized that if not me, then who? And, you know, I saw the need and I decided to fulfill the need. So all of the reading, all of the mentoring, all the coaching, all the love that I get here in this practice, it's it basically led to the willingness to take action. Uh, and I, I think all of us have that, that moment of a, a crucible, um, whether we actually look at that challenge square in the eye and say, all right, I'm not in my comfort zone, but I'm going to step boldly forward into my power because the bigness of that man within is going to change the world. And so that is probably what I do to maintain this energy. I've always had that energy for practice, but now I've almost got an expanded level of energy because I know the role is now bigger. It's not only my practice, it's the world. And I think we all have that opportunity to make that realization and then act in accordance. Yes. Yes, yes. And, and I want to ask you a question um, that bubbled up for me as I listened to you. And I think I know the answer, or but, but, it, but I want to ask you about engineer experience. Before I do that, um, how can people further support the ACC? And we will certainly put this in the notes when we put this out as a blog post, but how can people further support the ACC and Australia chiropractic right now? Well, the Australian Chiropractic College has its own website. And again, I can provide those details. And there's a donation page on there and that would be incredibly well received. Uh, if you want to go to the events like the Family Wellness Super Conference and you want to, you know, you haven't seen that event, then you know, go to the, the, the landing page for that, purchase a ticket to that. All of those funds go off to both Pediatric Research and the ACC. Uh, otherwise, you can contact me directly if there's some way that uh, you you would like me to be able to support or put together a project or a program. If you've got some idea that you'd like to get traction with, then I will do whatever I can to, to put that, that onto a platform that makes it more accessible and we can do fundraising together because I, I said I'm now committed, um, dedicated to being able to just find a way to you know, continue to support this profession, reaching its potential, making an impact and, and not, not just surviving, but thriving and, and fulfilling you know, I, I, I see that there's three elements that I talk about. I mean, we always talk about the triune or, or the, the triad, the triune of, you know, the triad of health or the triune of chiropractic. But I think there's a three, which, which for me, it starts with, um, you know, get the big idea. Um, then it moves on to really um, our sacred trust. And if we get our sacred trust right, then we end up with BJ's utopia. So those three passages of writing, of understanding the role, of chiropractic and subluxation in a person's life, guarding that principle and then delivering it to the world, we will have a better planet as a result of chiropractic. And together, we need to do that. Absolutely. And 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 here's where I think that that question that I was going to ask that I was saving was this. You just put, it, put on um, a huge event twice and raised a lot of funds and took a lot of effort and energy. Um, which means you gave a huge gift to the world and to chiropractic. How did it feel afterwards in terms of giving that gift? Oh, gee, I, I, it's a, there's several elements to that answer. My first answer that came to my mind, I'm gonna honor that answer, but it goes much deeper obviously than that and I'll reflect more. My first answer is not enough. There is more I can do. There is more to do. There is more I'm going to do and therefore more that I want to do. If all of us serve to the fullest of our ability, the world would be changed. So my first answer was not enough. However, the real answer is in the moment, inspired. I, I speak to some of the most incredible chiropractors whose love overflows and whose passion energizes and whose purpose galvanizes. And those conversations remind me not only of what I'm capable of, but the, the value that they have contributed and the necessity now more than ever for what it is that we do as chiropractors. 
So it is inspiring to, to speak with these people, to speak with you, to, to hear your message and to, to when you bring speakers on here, to be reminded of the incredible opportunity we have through our service to improve our own lives, to find meaning and purpose, to express philosophy, but to then take that out into the lives of the people within our practices, within our communities. And then if we individually, collectively do this as a profession, again, we change the trajectory of a child, a family's life and their health, but we will change the trajectory of communities and countries and therefore the planet when we align and unify with the chiropractic mission. So it's incredible. It's, I love this. I would not be doing anything else. Beautiful. And, and, and I've had the experience of, of, of the experience that you've had in terms of doing something for chiropractic and giving to chiropractic and fundraising. And I've had that experience and you've just put an incredible amount of energy effort and through service, you know, on Christmas morning, there's this morning when you're a parent and, and you don't know this, you know, a little bit as a kid, because you're excited to give a gift to your parents when you, you know, made a drawing, and gave it to them or something like that. But when you're, when you're, when you have your own kids, there's a place where you, um, on Christmas morning and you're, you're just so excited to give the gift and see them open it. And that provides so much joy. You almost, you really don't care about the gifts they're like oh please open mine you don't care as much about the gifts that you're getting as much as you're like so enthralled with hoping looking forward to your wife opening her gift or or your kids and you know that with all that energy of you put together a gift and that um of those 75 presentations um to the chiropractic profession particularly australia but people who are watching from around the world um and participating from around the world um, those, you know, and then giving that it's like Christmas morning, you know, cause you're just so excited for people to open up what you put all your time and energy, um, into giving, um, and, and it, when you're a true servant, you know that, and I'm saying this because I'd like to encourage more people in chiropractic to, to take action. Like what you just said, if, if more people, if everybody did things like that, or and not everybody do things on the same magnitude, but gave more in some way, they would realize how much they get back just in the act of giving, um, you know, in terms of their spirit, in terms of their being, from a sense of um, gratitude. And that, you know, the gratitude and the joy comes from giving and um, rather than focusing on the receiving. Mm -hmm. 100%. The, the, the giving actually fills your cup. Right. It's, it's a paradox. You, the more that you give fully your cup, the greater capacity you have. And the cup gets wider the more you give as well. It's not like you're filling this cup. I don't, it's not like you're filling a single container. That right. container expands. You get the capacity to, to carry more by the more that you give. And, um, and when you, 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 know, you speak with people, you know, just being in a conversation with you at it, it increases the, the right. desire to serve, the gratitude for what you've done. And, you know, I, I know that every person, they, when they do this, they're changed. And, you know, I mean, one of the, the greats of the chiropractic profession, you know, John Demartini, he's one, of his, one of his books is called The Gratitude Effect. You know, mm -hmm. it is a chiropractic and universal principle, as all chiropractic principles are. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's all recognize this immutable and undeniable truth and be who we are designed to be, which is servants um, of what it is that we love and are passionate about. Absolutely, absolutely. And, I, and I, I really would like to hope and envision that from this particular podcast where people listen to it, it, it grows more servants um, because the chiropractic profession needs that and the world needs that, especially with what we've all experienced through 2020. So I, I wanna thank you again, Dr. Marcus, for what you have just done and what you, I know you'll be continuing doing and supporting and leading and inspiring. Um, thank you so much. Uh, if there's any last thing that you'd like to say um, in terms of how people can get in touch with you or your programs, please uh, take a moment. Look, I, I, I don't think there's really any more that I would say about any of those things. Um, if you're gonna put the links in the page, that's sufficient. But for those who are on or who have felt that they would like to serve but don't know how, for those who would like to do more but 
don't feel like they could initiate a project, but they'd like to contribute to a, contribute to a project and they know they've got value to add in some way, shape or form, it doesn't have to be money. It could be time. It could be expertise. It could be ideas. It could be connections. Just reach out, whether it's to me. I mean, my, hopefully uh, my details will be there accessible for you. I mean, Daniel's also you know, an incredible servant of the profession and I'm sure he'd love some help as well. Or just find somebody in your local community um, who may feel like the, you know, they could have some help and contribution too. So just start with a step that you're comfortable with, an action that you feel you're capable of, and then you will build greater capacity for greater service. Um, and then as your cup fills and your joy and fulfillment increase, you know, the world will be the limit. So I'd probably just end with that call to action and, and, and call to, you know, call to arms of the chiropractic profession of all of us unifying together. We don't have to agree with what the other person stands for. Actually, I'll, I'm going to take one moment to finish with a story that really impacted me. And again, I'm, I'm, I, I love what Mother Teresa said about don't ever ask me to a, um, a walk against war, I'll come to a peace rally. Because again, the language is really important there. But uh, something that uh, I once read the audio well, as an audio book um, of um, Storm and Norman Schwarzkopf. I, I, I'm not an American, so I'm not quite sure if, if that's the correct pronunciation of his name, but he did Desert Storm. And um, you, you guys probably know a lot more about that in the States than we do here in Australia. But what was interesting and the only thing I took away from his autobiography, to be completely honest, was when he was hosting the all the allied um, forces. So he had the Air Force, he had the Navy, and he had the Army. And they were having a, a meeting. And as the, as the four-star general, he has an overview of everything. And he said, okay, everybody put your input. And now let's make this really clear. You don't have to agree with the decision that I make. We can fight here and, out before, and argue and disagree amongst everything. But once the final decision is made, you will commit to that decision, you will support that decision, you will stay the course of that decision, even if you don't agree with that decision. You might have wanted to go this way, you might have wanted to go that way, but once we unify, we unify behind a decision and that's how we win. And so I don't need to agree with everybody and I don't need everybody to agree with me. But if we move in the forward of chiropractic, move in the forward, the, move forward in for the future of chiropractic, we move forward as one. And that means that we help each other irrespective of whether or not it's something that you feel you can get behind. It's enough just to give support to the person taking action, moving forward. And that I think is something that chiropractors need to move out of that separateness mindset and my I'm right and you're wrong mindset compared to Together, we're going to be more right. We have more similarities than we have differences. And our love of chiropractic should bind us and unify us. That is probably what I'd say. And if there is anything I can do to serve you, to assist you, to help you, call me. I will be there. If there is Thanks. something you feel you could contribute, let's do it together. Outstanding. And, and we need that throughout the chiropractic profession and throughout the world uh, in, in all our little um, cells that are vitalistic cells that are... Uh, you know, picking chiropractic up as uh, we move towards this new renaissance uh, that is, I really feel, being birthed. So uh, for, for the profession, thank you so much for all that you've given, Dr. Marcus. Thank you for, um, for what you're helping in Australia. I know that many in Australia are grateful. I'm grateful. And thank you so much. And everyone, thank you for listening. Make sure to share this, um, invite others to watch and listen so we can spread the message and keep changing spines, lives, and minds with chiropractic. We'll see you at Mile High in June. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Marcus. I look forward to seeing you when I get back in Australia when we're allowed to travel there again. <laughs> 100, and we look forward to that. And thank you for everything you do in Mile High. You guys are rock stars. Thank you. <laughs>